Sandy Monroe is going to be here to talk about the solid state battery tech in the light of what the CEO of QuantumScape, the company believed to be the leader of the solid state battery development, told me in our recent interview. We'll get Sandy to respond and tell us if the solid state batteries is really the answer. And we're going to start right now. Ooh, welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss Sandy's almost weekly appearances on this channel moving forward. But before I bring Sandy in, here's some context. As you probably know, the holy grail of electric car batteries is the solid state technology. The company that's believed to be the leader in that right now is the California-based QuantumScape. But here's what its CEO Jagdeep Singh told me when I talked to him very recently. On the charge front, uh, instead of charging from zero to eighty uh, percent in uh, in uh, uh, you know uh, something like forty minutes, about an hour to full charge. Uh, we believe we can uh, charge to 80% in on the order of 15 minutes. Now, the full interview is already posted here on my channel, but 15 minutes is still not good enough to compete with gas cars. And it's much harder to have people switch to something new if that something new is not at least the same, but preferably better than what they have right now. So it looks like we have a bit of a problem. Now I will bring a Sandy in to drop some wisdom on us. And by the way, I taped that interview when my voice was at its worst. So heads up. But before that, of course, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by VinFast. Check out their upcoming electric crossover VF8 arriving this year. Reserve it today and you'll get a $3,000 e-voucher towards your car, a VinFast NFT and other amazing benefits. And you can do it right now using the reservation link in the description of this video. All right, Sandy, so um, let's talk solid state batteries again because since last time we talked you and i talked to jagdeep uh seeing the ceo of quantumscape and what he told me is that even when the batteries are out zero to eighty percent charge is still going to be 15 minutes which is not gonna compete with gas cars even at that timing is is the solid state batteries are pretty much only hope and if so how can we ratify this when people we were trying to get people to switch from gas cars to the slow charging electric cars? Okay, so let's talk in about one of those slow charging electric cars for a moment. Um, so Mujib from One, okay, that's our next energy. Um, he has just completed a trip from Detroit to Traverse City and back to Detroit. Now, most people don't know where Traverse City is and probably Detroit would be a hard thing for a lot of people to find in a map. So let me give you uh, the straight answer here. That's 750 plus miles. No stopping for charging. 850 miles and no stopping for charging. So I, that's the first thing. So I don't think that there's any big deal as far as taking a long, long trip like that. In the future, this is going to be pretty commonplace. Charging, um, I forgot the exact amount, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip talking about how long it took to charge, but it was record fast. This is for a new uh, battery, uh, uh, a new style battery. It's ready right now because he just tested it. Now, there's another guy, and his name is Pete Groover. I don't know if you ever met him or heard of him. He's, um, he's got a factory. It's kind of like a garage, but actually a factory that, um, that um, um, he creates. He takes dead Teslas and turns them into live Teslas. He's got a lot of technology and whatnot in his hip pocket. And quite frankly, um, he's got a new technology a new battery pack that he's going to be putting into one of his cars. Fast charging, maybe 15 minutes. But again, we're looking at something where you're going to be able to go 800 to 1,000 miles. It'll have 100 years of life. And it's ready to rock right now. He's going to be showing it uh, on his uh, YouTube channel here shortly. 
I'll, I'll send you a link. Anyways, this is the kind of stuff that's coming off on a daily basis. So I look at this and, and then I go and look at the solid state guys and they say, well, it's going to be right around the corner in 2025. I think when 2025 comes, it's going to be a little hard for them. So that's one thing. The second thing is the charging business. Everybody says, oh, 15 minutes. I can't possibly wait that long. But most people, myself included, treat the, their electric cars like they would with their electric toothbrush. I don't really care how long it takes for my electric toothbrush to recharge because I just put it on a charger every night and it's ready in the morning. And although I don't use uh, an electric shaver, uh, many people do that as well. They just put it on the, uh, put it on the old electric charger in, the, uh, in, their, in their bathroom and boop, it's done. I think, that, I think that a lot of the stuff on fast charging or range anxiety, I believe this is like mainstream media trying to sell soap. You know, they gotta sell newspapers somehow so they're uh, so uh, the way they the way they do that is by creating a lot of anxiety or angst or you know it, what's the old adage if it bleeds it reads, and I think that that's kind of where we are right now. And I think what the time is it's it's time to uh, put aside the uh, uh, the old I don't know myths associated with EVs and move on. I don't think. Um, I don't know. I don't think that there's any problem with uh, 15 minutes or so because you know what? I'm pretty sure if I drove 850 odd miles, I'd probably have to stop at least once for a snack or a, or a or a bathroom break. So I don't I don't see the I don't see the big deal. I don't I don't see it at all. It's one thing when you've got to go to a gas station. Okay, that's a big deal. I do not have gas gas station at home. Ah, but when I had a farm, when I worked on the farm, we could use uh, avgas, or sorry, not avgas, well, not aviation gas, but uh, agricultural gas, okay, aggie gas. But I didn't like it because it made my car run funny. But no one that I know of has a gas station in their house. But I do have electricity in my house. And what we've got to do is start thinking differently. 15 minutes, I'm charging at home, I'm eating dinner, I'm watching TV, I'm going to bed, I wake up, I shower and shave, I go downstairs, have breakfast, and then I get in my car. Somewhere in that 15 minutes is gonna be happening. I don't, I don't see it. I think this is all, like I say, some newspapers trying to sell soap. That's, that's all I see. Well, so I think most people understand that charging at home is, you know, what you do 99% of the time. You know, the fast charging obviously comes in when you go long distance. And, you know, I understand that we all got to pee and take a sandwich and all that stuff once we're traveling. But, you know, it is hard to switch people to new technology. And do you <clears> think <throat> we'll never need to get to a three or five minute uh, recharge uh, when it comes to electric cars because the batteries will be huge or you know will send us for hundreds of miles on one charge i don't think uh, like i said uh when when we traveled when corey and i traveled like eleven thousand or sorry eight thousand miles in 11 days guess what we did not notice charging because quite frankly when you <laughs> when you when you get done driving a thousand miles or something or four or five hundred miles, I mean, you're you're pretty much exhausted. You you can't really believe how tired we were sometimes when we pulled into the stations. And running into a gas station to buy, you know, some elephant ear or some damn thing, uh, I couldn't uh, I can't begin to tell you we were in a hurry. And yet the charger always beat us. It was done we charged the 80%. It was done uh, before before we got out of uh, the gas station, or sorry, not the gas station. Gas stations we ate at a lot, but but the uh, the supercharging station, we, we we never once had to wait patiently for the, only once. We did wait once 
And that, and that was because uh, we knew that there was a blizzard, we heard that there was a blizzard coming and we figured we should get charged to the maximum. We didn't charge 80%, we, and that, that gets slow. But that was it. And now, now with 850 miles, like a thousand miles maybe if, is what Pete's saying. You know what, in a, in a hundred years, these batteries are gonna last a hundred years. I don't, I don't see the anxiety anymore. I don't see how any, in fact, I just heard a few minutes ago and I, I had one of, our, uh, one of our partners in England, uh, he told me that his grandmother just bought an EV. And she's got to be, based on his age, his grandmother has got to be 90 years old, 80, 90 years old. She's trying to be hip. Now, <laughs> so I think we can put that stuff behind us. Okay, now you talk, you're talking about that Model S that, that, that uh, Pete, uh, uh, you know, drove for over 700 miles, I believe. No, no, that was Majib. Oh, yes, Majib that's right. from, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, but you know, for now, it's just one off. When do you think that technology can actually be on the market? I'm, I already know that, uh, that there's uh, quite a number of car companies talking to him. <clears throat> he's got two things going for him. One, he's got a brand new uh, technology that is showing a huge amount of process, profit, uh, promise. Having a hard time with my tongue this morning. But anyway, a huge amount of promise. I can also tell you that Pete has got the same sort of thing happening. There's a lot of people that are going to be watching what's going on with, um, with these two cars and these two, like I say, battery kind of uh, uh, situations. So I believe that, um, I believe that it's not going to happen. It, it's going to happen much, much quicker than the guys in solid state uh, really want to know about because I, I'm telling you what, it, if they start producing these batteries and they're even close, okay, and usually you understate because when uh, Majib, when he, um, when he pulled in, he said, oh, we still had charge left on the battery. How far more did it go? Who knows? They probably ran to the bathroom. They didn't care to uh, they probably didn't care to know how, for, how much further the battery would, would take them. So I think, I think battery technology is moving wicked fast. And I think that there's, there's going to be a lot of new surprises that are going to um, slow down, if you like. The, the big thing with, with solid state, not to throw them under a bus, yes, they charge fast. But you know what? They're much lighter. That's why I like them. They're lighter. Anything that lightens the vehicle is going to give me more range. I like that part better. That okay. should be the real narrative. <laughs> well, but you know, you're a public figure now. You probably read some of the YouTube comments. <laughs> People are hard to convince. And you know, the naysayers will say, oh, well, electric cars, they, they don't, I, I can refuel my ice car much faster. So there is reality and facts that you were just talking about, but there's right. also the public. How okay, do we so get them over that hump? So I believe in, in, um, in listening to public fi figures that I really admire. And one of them is John Wayne. And John Wayne said, life is tough. It's tougher if you're stupid, okay? And that's really what's gonna happen. Life is gonna be tough for some of us. It's always gonna be tough for some of us. But it's tougher for the stupid who don't quite catch on. And I've found that in a lot of cases, when I'm talking about battery technology and battery life and electric motors and this, that, and the next thing, material science, I found that most of the people that give me the hardest times are who? People with no technical background whatsoever. Well, I heard it from a friend who heard it from a friend who heard it from another that, you know, you've been fooling around. They made a song about this. I'm telling you flat, there's no way in hell that these things are true. I've got the numbers. I, I mean, when, when somebody says, can you do blah, blah, whatever, um, I either say yes or no. I'm strictly a light switch. I don't like to guess. And I don't have to guess if somebody comes along and says, hey, Sandy, look at my car. Hey, Sandy, watch this. Hey, Sandy, here's the data. 
That's what I believe. I don't believe rumors and innuendos and stuff like that. It's just plain old crap. And uh, yes, there's people that are always going to get in the way of progress. They're called Luddites. And uh, it's just like what happened, where that term came from was the Industrial Revolution in England. Okay, and yes, people kept saying, no, we have to knit sweaters in, uh, in cottages at homes. And, uh, and we have to charge, you know, a thousand bucks each sweater. We can't have these, these old ladies not knitting sweaters. Okay, well, here we are. Well, we can't, we can't shut down these gas stations. I mean, really, there's gas station attendants that, that, uh, that have got to make a living. They'll find something else to do, just like the knitting ladies found something else to do. Maybe they sold eggs. I don't know. But I know one thing for sure. Betting against EVs right now is very, very foolish. If you want to hear from Sandy on other exciting topics, tune in next week or check out his channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged. Take it